You have entered the Chronics rabbit hole, and Epikins, welcome back to the channel. This is story time with ETC, episode number 12. And this is Isaac Delahaye from Epica itself, the guitarist god. I'm so excited to have Isaac coming down the rabbit hole. Can you say something? Oh, hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> no way. You're not playing? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. Isaac, so you can legit hear us? I can hear you. And I wow. can see you. <laughs> um, we, we've been stressing, my friend. Um, First of all, it's amazing to to see you in person through Zoom, Isaac. Um, we've been fans of yours for about a year and a half. I can tell by the looks. <laughs> We're hardcore fans. Um, okay, you, okay. You guys really took over our lives. Um, we started with a reaction channel on YouTube, and we started with actually Nightwish, and then everyone kind of said, "Well, if you like metal and you like your kind of heavier stuff, you should check out some Epica as well." Okay. Okay. So we went and checked out Epica, and I go all in. So we've literally we've been checking every single concert, every single song, and we're trying to oh, catch wow. up because we got a lot of things to catch up on. <laughs> and so how long was this ago? Like, how long have you been listening now to? It's been to about a year and a half. So. We'll, not oh, last wow. September, but the previous September is when we actually started. And we That's got cool. so many Epicans that are part of our channel now. We even call ourselves Chronicans <laughs> because of how much we relate to you guys. Um, the okay. band itself has always been so enthusiastic but so family oriented so friendly when you guys are performing. So that's always been so encouraging for us. We're so much about family over here. Okay. And, and first, <laughs> what was that? And cats, apparently. And cats. and cats, yes. I know you have cats as well, right? Yeah, I have four of them. You got wow. four of them, right? So first oh, of no, all, it's like my wife has four of them. Yeah, <laughs> right. And my a lot more cats. animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. So first of all, you're in the middle of making an album right now, and I know you probably can't allude to much of what's going on, but I do know that you all have your own somewhat studio at home and are doing stuff kind of on your own. You're in your studio right now, that yeah. beautiful guitar right behind you. Um, is there anything you can allude to what you're doing right now on that? Well, actually, um, after this, I'll go straight back to what I was doing uh, oh. last week, uh, which is, uh, well, currently I'm working on songs from other uh, band members. Like like you might know, we all the guys in the band are writing, so we have yes. five songwriters. And um, uh, so I first finished a couple of songs that I wrote. Um, right we had some writing sessions with the whole band scattered throughout the last couple of months because we live Congrats. in four different countries and that's not very wow. it's not your average setup for a band like let's rehearse every week that's yeah oh four cool. different countries wow yeah so i'm in belgium and some obviously are in holland yes uh, mark lives in sicily which is italy yep yeah you can't tell any sicilian that it's italy but um <laughs> and uh simone lives in germany so so oh, it's like and yeah so even the people in holland are like not close by so they're they're all in different places so to rehearse or do something like that like the old school way as i did yeah back in the days, you know or like a lot of bands probably are still doing that's not possible for us and um so we have to do it in a different way so everyone writes his ideas or songs or whatever it is. And then we get together every now and then because that's way easier. If you, you have a certain idea, you can explain it in, yeah. Yeah, more in depth or you can, if someone tells you through, let's say a Google doc online, like I don't like the bridge or whatever, then okay, well, you don't like yeah. the bridge. If you say that in person, you can you can talk it through, and uh, yes. so that's why we do these writing camps. Uh, we had three of them, and that, the third oh. one was 
last one. Um, so throughout these couple past couple of months, I've been kind of uh, adding whatever I have to offer, uh, which would be stuff in the guitar department, I guess. Uh, that's what I bring to the table on songs from other uh, band members because everyone has his own way of writing and his own yeah. style, I would say. Like, you obviously, me as a guitar player, I love guitar riffs. Um, but Same then, as me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you play guitar as well? Yeah, yeah, we got a guitar right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Nice. That's not a guitar. <laughs> wow, that's an acoustic. <laughs> yeah, no, I have some acoustics here, so it's okay. Right. Sorry, Matt. But, uh, <laughs> and then, um, what was I saying? So let's say Kuhn is uh, writing more piano-oriented stuff or orchestral stuff. Um, of course, he also likes riffs. and We're all metalheads, so we like riffs, but... As I don't know how to play drums, I just program something and then I pass it on to Aryan and he can come up with something that sounds like him, even if it's right. a plugin, you know? So that's the, the, the cool thing about it. So I'm in the middle of that now. Like uh, now I'm working on a song of Mark because mm -hmm. oddly enough, since he's also a guitar player, he doesn't really focus on guitars when he's writing music. It's more the general vibe and Okay. Like so he he he's more than happy to pass it on to me and be like, okay, you you do whatever you want with it, and uh, that's amazing freedom to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess we're at a point where you have to trust each other, each other, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if I write something, I could spend days and days uh, trying to do some sort of orchestration, which I sometimes do. <laughs> <laughs> but then you know i i pass it on to kuhn and after half a minute it already sounds way better than the stuff that i <laughs> wow because he has the plugins he knows how to play piano i have this to this is my oh my god piano. i love that you know <laughs> i don't i spend money on guitars and all of that i don't spend money on pianos so i think i saw I, your son playing on that before Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, so if you saw my son playing, that's also how I play. It's like I, just, <laughs> I'm not a good piano player. I'm not a good drummer. I'm not a good singer. But I try to do that on my demos. Wow. Okay. To give the general vibe of what I want, but then right. you give it to, to someone who's way better in what you want them to do. You know. So that's really enlightening because I I always thought you were maybe just giving the guitar parts, but you're actually trying to give a whole package as a demo for them to understand the full spirit behind what you're trying oh, yeah. to put forward. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And also knowing yeah. that all of you get a chance to have that moment on the album. I don't know if many bands have that freedom where everyone gets to have their mind put a song into. Maybe they do. But for us, that sounds really cool. And because I know even Simone's mo mentioned that she sometimes like singing Rob songs because of his, like the his terms artistic. are in it and just his artistic view. So mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, really, yeah. really cool that you guys get to do that. And also we forgot to congratulate you for 15 years with Epica. Thank you. This year, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, what got Alana into Epica itself actually was the retrospect concert because she was actually classically... Yes. Yeah, Love the music I, I played, growing. growing up, I learned how to play tuba and baritones. I was very brass instrument oriented. And so I actually never listened to metal growing up. It was never something that was in my repertoire. So it wasn't until this past year that I started listening to metal and Epica was the perfect marriage between my classical that oh, yeah. I grew up loving and the metal that my uh, partner grew up loving. So it was oh, just, wow. it's been amazing. Yeah. And that's I'm brought sorry. us closer together, right? <laughs> I like it. Like, this is great. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you don't hear that a lot. Like someone goes into metal, let's say, usually it's like, I'm lucky, man. <laughs> you either like it or you're like, well, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Once she heard Mark, she was like, oh, my God, this is like, a thing. <laughs> oh, OK, yeah. because I think if you I'm not sure if I, I guess Cry for the Moon is still our most viewed uh, 
video online. Right. And if you, you know, I, I, I went through comments like years ago, like when YouTube became something, right? Yeah. Um, and then the most, I think the, the comment that gets the most likes or something is the one like, oh, it's beautiful until the guy starts doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> no, that makes it better. <laughs> yeah. So I guess opinions are mixed uh, if it comes to that but we like it so that's why we keep I it in love the, the darkness that is brought into epica so like with i mentioned the marriage of the symphonic and the metal coming together and i think that that's something that epica really shines forward very well is how they're able to create this beauty from this darkness even with the um lyrics that are being pushed forward and what's being talked about it's really uplifting while still having the heavier tone that you would experience from metal music in all different genres within the the family of metal itself yeah yeah, yeah we I have heard that a lot but it's something like for us it's normal so it's like, exactly I, I, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our, our family loves epica so much that even our one-year-old listens to epica and we even have a video of him reacting to chasing the dragon on youtube fully and he's oh, just like cool. grabbed his bottle so he he's loves like, this is great <laughs> <laughs> and cool. i don't know do you know where we're from well, I saw in the invitation, well, from the U.S. somewhere, I guess, it's Mountain We're actually high. in Canada. So oh, we're Canada. actually from Alberta, Canada. And I we're not going to... You love Canada? <laughs> yeah, it has a European vibe. So every time we're in the U.S., so we, we cross the border and go to Canada. Uh, I, I feel a, a little more at home in Canada than I... To me, North or like uh, USA is, is yeah. more... Uh, mm -hmm foreign feels more foreign to me than Canada wow yeah I I can understand that absolutely I've only been to Britain but we're actually planning to go somewhere at the end of the year in Netherlands in September for your show actually oh. <laughs> so we're very okay. excited to make it all the way there that's how much you have actually influenced us we always say like oh, I hope you come to Canada but we're like no we got so motivated and moved by retrospect that we knew if you were going to do another show like that, we oh. had to go. So as soon as that happened, we actually started reaching out to you, like the Epica management, mm -hmm. Feet First management, and started trying to get a hold of you guys. So now yeah. we got a hold of you guys and we want to be a part of Epica moving forward. We're from Canada. We feel like we can help bring more Epicans out of Canada for you guys too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that sounds. Like We're on your team, man. <laughs> really cool. Oh, so you're the reason that this these shows are selling pretty fast. We were surprised because <laughs> we had no idea. You know, we we also do this in Mexico, and then the first. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a way, but it's the venue size is twice as big as as the one in Europe. Oh wow! Wow! I, I was it's ten thousand capacity, and I was already like, really, we're we gonna do that and sold out and just just Easily. like that we added the second one same in holland and that's uh not what we expected so <laughs> that's very humble of you guys how could you not expect that with all your success though like epicans are so loyal at least from what i've seen all the bands that we've reacted to the epicans are the most loyal band that i've ever seen and they're mm -hmm. there's no like conflict amongst the the epicans either where you can see that in a lot of other bands and it's what you guys are building as a community itself that i think is why people are coming across the world to come and see you guys yeah there's it's crazy how many people are traveling <laughs> it always blows my mind because also for retrospect actually we did this sort of uh, little documentary and i think it's the, there was a guy he came from Brazil. He flew in. He was like way too early, had nowhere to stay. So he was just put at the venue. And oh. then he w it, it was, uh, was it March as well? For the time of the year, it was pretty cold. It was even okay. snow. And um, so that was very odd, but but still, you know, it, it can happen. And um, But this guy came out with flip-flops. He's from Brazil. Oh, my gosh. No, he never experienced like close to zero degrees uh, yeah. Celsius. 
So, um, so he actually had to like go and buy shoes and clothes because he was <laughs> not there, like, prepared, <laughs> waiting for I don't know twenty four hours before the show or even longer. I don't wow. know so, stuff wow. like just you know, uh, it, it's still weird weird for me. Also, like people saying your music means so much or changed my life, or I I think that is the best compliment you can get as a musician. Mm -hmm. um, well, music's the best form of art, right? And you guys are nailing it. And you don't necessarily know what you're going to love. And I think that's why Alana was so enamored by it because she never knew this even could happen. And when I saw it, I'm like, Alana, you like your classical music. We got to get you in here. Help me out. We need something to have art together. So I want to thank you, Isaac, for literally bringing us closer together. And you are like a Yingui Malstein for me. And I mean that as you're one of my idols for guitar. And I every single day your solos put me in heaven, I tell you, man. That's uh that that's the plan if I come up with stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> you never know, you know. I just uh, let the music speak and dictate whatever it is that I should uh play. I, at least that's what I try. So, but thank you. Yeah, it's. Uh... Well, you're welcome. And since you're such a big guitar nerd, I would say, is that the seven string Les Paul Gibson behind you there? Or? Oh, that's actually the 78, is it 78? 78 uh, Black Beauty. Oh, wow. Okay. String. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's Gibson. Gorgeous. Yep. And uh, so I, I always wanted to have a uh, Black Beauty. I love the, like, the tear and wear. Yeah, the wear and tear looks great. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, that is gorgeous. Stunning. I never play it. It's just hanging there. It's just hanging. <laughs> it's in the perfect frame. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the seven string. Okay. Oh, wow beautiful yes so that's the cherry burst so it's plugged in i'm working on stuff <laughs> you're working on stuff right now and it's morning for you it's like 3 a.m for us so we're trying our best to oh, be wow. here with you <laughs> i'm so sorry about no. that oh no don't we just had daylight saving times too so it got pushed back another hour for us oh well. shit so you need to work or like in a couple of hours or well She's got to work in about what eight hours? I think so. Something like that. We'll be okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I know that you have your master's in music, and I'm really curious what got you into guitar and playing the guitar first, first off, and then oh. got into your love of music. I hated the guitar at first. <laughs> really? <laughs> so as a kid, um, I'm one of many. And um, oh, wow. So my parents uh, wanted us to, uh, like, they forced us to do art class, music academy, and um, and some sort of sport. So I did mm -hmm. football, and soccer. Nice. And um, went to art class and enrolled. Well, was was kind of like forced to go to music academy. And then the first year, you you hear all your uh, you learn how to read the notes and the right. rhythm mm -hmm. um, without an instrument. And then this, from the second year on, you have to choose an instrument. And I wanted to play drums. And uh, oh. so I'm talking, I'm seven or eight years old now. Um, I wanted to be a drummer, but my dad, since I'm one of many, he said, no way, because if, you know, it's already a full house. And if I also... More hectic. <laughs> yeah, more hectic with a drum kit. So, so no, no, you just pick something else. Then I thought I'll pick uh, trumpet just to piss him off, like blow the <laughs> trumpet in his ear all day. Um, so you had to pick three choices. I did trumpet, piano, because my older brother was already playing piano. Okay. And guitar, because a lot of my friends then also chose guitar. It's one of the most popular, which is classical guitar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the most popular instruments, I would say piano and guitar and percussion or drums. Mm -hmm. And then since the, the classes for both trumpet and piano were already full, 
um, I got like they said, okay, you need to play guitar. Wow. Like, they bought me a classical guitar and I couldn't care less. I was like, okay. <laughs> and the Humble first beginnings. Was that? Humble beginnings. Oh man, I, I, I didn't like it at all. So I, the first couple of years, uh, I guess it also had to do with the teacher. He was like, I don't know. I just, I, I thought it was so boring and, and nothing cool about it. And, uh, it wasn't up until, let me see. So I was, uh, 11. Then I got an electric guitar because my stepmom, she said, if you listen, if you learn how to play the Sultans of Swing solo by Dire Straits, yeah, then you get an electric guitar. Cause I already like played for a couple of years at that point, hated it, but I thought, you know, if I get an electric guitar, that might be cooler. The next step, yeah. Like in a band and I'm closer to that drum kit that I like, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, uh, so I got the guitar, I was 11 years old, um, but I could only play the classical way, which is fingers and, and it's a wider right. neck. And then the electric guitar had a thinner neck and and it had steel strings, let's say. So if you pluck them with your finger, it hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to use a guitar pick. And I couldn't. I was like, well, I just learned how to do it with my fingers. And now I have to do it with a guitar pick. So it was sitting there up until a couple of friends asked me like to join them uh, to play a band. Oh, wow. And it was actually... Or was it first that my, it, it was my guitar teacher back then, classical guitar teacher who, who told me like, well, you, you don't practice at all, but still you're kind of good. I mean, like natural I, talent. Oh, you, you're picking it up uh, pretty naturally. So let, let us make a deal. Uh, and I think it must have been shortly after like, the beginning of the year, January. And um, so he said, up until end of this school year, so up until end of June, let's say, yeah, uh, I want you to to just uh, practice more. Just give it a shot, and you'll mm -hmm. see that by the time, well, by the time we end this year, you're gonna be way better. And uh, then maybe you can even do something with music. And I think it was that which kind of pushed me. I mean, I like a good challenge. That's yes. Mm -hmm. So if someone tells me like, "Hey, let's do this," I'm, I'm usually up for that, <laughs> and I'll make sure that I win. <laughs> um, and then the second thing was like, he kind of put that little seed there. Like, you can actually have a career in music, which wow. I never really thought of, I guess. And um, I mean, by that time, I also listened to you know Guns and Roses and. Yeah, and they're uh, getting into the whole metal thing. So I had the posters of Slash on my wall and stuff like that. So that clicked with me, and that's pretty much the beginning of it all. So I started practicing, and before I knew it, I was like uh, way ahead of all the others in my year. And um, and then shortly after, I went back to not caring about classical so much. I did whatever I had to do and whatever he told me to do. But he already knew that I was practicing more electric guitar. So I was really doing that on my own. and had wow. my own. Wow. And that's kind of how it started. So from someone who hated <laughs> the guitar <laughs> to someone who... Uh, really loves it and then you know that's what i did i went to the netherlands to study there okay and and that's pretty much the connection with epica there like i that's how i met the drummer and the keyboard player mm -hmm. and then i actually replaced the original guitar player um, for their first album, for a, a show that he couldn't make, uh, right? He could play the show, so I already filled in for that guy right at the start. You know, that was just one show, but that that's how I got to know everyone. We kept in touch. I did my death metal <laughs> stuff, and right, yeah, went in a different direction for a while, and then um, 
And then they called me to to join the band. And that's been 15 years. Ago. <laughs> yeah, and that was in 09 when they reached out to you. And I see here that God Dethroned, is was that the band you were talking about that you joined? After yeah, yeah. The guitarist had left? Yeah, right. I had many bands. I think it's okay. Point, six bands I did progress. Like you're wearing a Dream Theater hat. I love <laughs> Yeah, buddy. And I'm really curious about the new one with Portnoy. Um, yes oh my god it's gonna be great yeah i can't wait to see if that so glad he's back but it brings yeah me too and i maybe this is online right i shouldn't say stuff like that but <laughs> I, think I, even, I, I think i even commented on his post like right oh, or on the dream theater post i don't know like something like i waited for this news <laughs> for 13 years you know <laughs> we, we just saw them too with their dream sonic um show that came out to calgary oh, okay. and they were amazing and the drummer my, i think mike as well as the drummer before mike portnoy yeah, right? uh, he's amazing too right so yes. oh yeah he's an amazing no drummer. Yeah. yeah he's like yeah totally but i think um portnoy kind of is dream theater like his whole yes. Not only his style, but definitely also his style. But I think, yeah, he, he gives the whole thing, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm with you there. Um, yeah, like, oh, we're also a metal band feel, let's say. <laughs> well, back to you, though. Um, <laughs> what I think is really cool is how, how much of a family you guys are over in Europe with the whole metal scene itself. Because what's crazy is... Aryan was with God Dethroned. He helped you get into there. And then you guys go and join Epica. And there's just so much that you guys are doing to try to push metal to for the world. There's a metal factory that Rob's a part of. You have your own college of metal yourself. And I'd yeah. love to know about that, if that's going great for you, how people can come and join you on that. Oh, yeah. So uh, College of Metal is something that... Uh... Why did I come up with that? Well, it was more like, was it during the pandemic? No, it was before that. At some point, like um, I used to teach a lot of guitar back in the days. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it already started in high school where I was just teaching some peers after hours. And then um, I also did private lessons, uh, music academies, like when I uh, graduated from College of Music, right. uh, I started up like a sort of pop or jazz department in two different music academies here in Belgium. Wow. Um, and then, you know, Epica became bigger and bigger. So it was, uh, you know, I had to quit, quit doing all of that because it was right. too busy with the band. Yeah, but it is something that I always liked, and that people keep asking me, like, "Do you do any guitar lessons?" Um, and I, I always have to say, like, "Well, I don't really have time for that," but I feel sorry for it as well because, of course, if if I didn't have that teacher back then who showed, who pointed out certain things, then then I wouldn't have been here, and uh, so I, I, I kind of want to do the same or. Uh, give back to that community let's say uh, so so then i thought it out like what well, i can't do it physically because i can't every the problem back then when i was teaching was that i'm teaching and then suddenly i'm gone for a month because i'm on tour yeah and then i have to find a replacement or just don't do the private lessons you know, and then you, you pick it up again afterwards. And I, I thought for the students, it's it's kind of a pain in the ass, you know, as much as they liked me as a teacher, at least that, that's what they said. But I I can imagine that switching back and forth is, is never... The continuity really... wasn't there enough for them, I guess. Yeah. Right. So then I thought, what if I do it online and I have a different okay. approach because then it's there and people can just take the lesson whenever they feel like doing okay it. right so you like made lessons that they can then watch and you yeah. already had it pre-recorded i see what you mean yeah and so the whole idea of college of metal is actually <clears throat> but i still need to roll it out the way i envisioned it 
it's pretty much instead of some guy online showing you how to play let's say master of puppets just to take a song that everyone knows uh, right it's not me who's going to show that it's going to be either james hatfield or kirk hammett that's right. the concept right oh, so cool. college of metal so far only oh. has epical songs because i'm the one showing you yes and i already talked to a whole bunch of different um uh, guitar players from other bands to do the same thing so wow one of them is Alvati. uh who else oh um Bert Nielsen from Scar Symmetry like there's a lot of oh people my gosh willing to to do it the only That's thing incredible. to have a musician who has time to do it that yes. year or who's too busy writing an album recording it on tour Plus, uh, at some point, uh, COVID hit, and then yes. I was about to record the L V D things, and then that got, uh, I mean, everything shut down, so it didn't happen. And after that, we went on a steam train ourselves, so um, yeah. But it's something I still need to pick up. But it, it's been good. People liked it, the lessons. I still, I bet. now and then, uh, like, it, it's been a couple of years now, so it's right. not like selling a lot of... Uh, stuff now like or teaching in that digital environment mm -hmm. but um I, I thought if you grow this sort of community where guitar players from the band explain what they do oh in that incredible band. that's incredible yeah. i think that's yeah. a beautiful vision yeah so that's what i think and and so if you grow some sort of uh, community there that you go straight to the source because mm -hmm. sometimes I also do, doing these lessons, I figured like, Oh, this is how I play it on the album, but this is how I do it live. Or I recorded it this way, but then years later on stage, I figured out if I play it here, it's easier or, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, or I play this because it needs uh, some sort of, I just played a very uh, progressive thingy. So now I need to, go into something easy you know the yep, little i totally get what you mean patience that's what i heard afterwards like people love the the explanation of why you play this or that not just this is how it's played but just the you know the, the story behind it too right yeah, the reason why you do it or and and you only get that from the people who either wrote it or were there when it was written or have something to do with it right so that's incredible because i know right now universities and stuff are going a lot of online courses and a lot of independent universities are coming where just brilliant minds are coming together to teach stuff that they know so to know that you're trying to get all these guitars to come to actually teach their own stuff get the yeah. source material to that for someone like me i would rather learn from you or a james hetfield than just a sheet of paper and you don't really know too yeah. much so i would yeah. invest in that and that's really amazing to know you have that goal and yeah time, and times the other thing though right times the other thing and uh publishing is another thing yes. <laughs> so that's, that's going into uh like the the, the the figures and numbers and and those details but this is something like it, it, I always think it should be win, 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 win for everyone involved. Yes. So for the, the not only the the person who makes it, you know, I don't think out of a profit way because I don't earn any money with that. I just recorded it. I had to look good, and it's like twenty euro for a lesson. That's not. I don't need to earn my money through that, you know. But um, uh, I want the other artists to earn. So if they do their lessons, then they right. get a good. But I don't need to have a lot of profit. I just need to be able to run it. And then the people yeah. should as well. And and yeah, so that's that was the main goal. Like everyone should be the winner. But then you have yeah. something copyright and uh, a, a publicist. And, and the official rule is like, if you want to do that, then I, I think it's already a 30% cut going to the publicist. But then I'm wow. like, oh, a second, you know, so if I write a song and I record the song and then I'm going to teach people online how to play it and then people pay for that, 
yeah. then I have to give 30% of that to someone else who has nothing to do with the song, oh, nothing. Right. So I, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. So I'm working around that. Uh, and, and I guess if the artist says to a publicist, like, this is not part of the deal, you know, the contract, yep. then that's okay, you know. But, but, so that's the issue that we for every band always have to solve and sometimes it's kind of hard but uh Makes yeah sense. I, so i think it's just... since that, no way i need the money that i'm like sorry guys but then i'm not going to do those lessons because i don't think they deserve them I'm no for that <laughs> to give them money it's good for you isaac <laughs> you got your morals you know what you're trying to build too right so yeah i mean it should be fair for everyone and yeah I, well, that's incredible. I kind of wanted to mention you also were with Mayan, and Mayan was also an, an awesome band. You were there for what three years around? Yeah, for I was there just to help them out, pretty much. Just you know? on the album itself. Okay. The initial plan, I think, was was uh, that Mark would also play guitar and grub, just the way he did, he did in Epica. But then uh, along the way, I think because it's a little more technical at some point, so yeah. he decided like, I'll, I'll leave that to someone else. And then he just asked me to, to, I didn't, I think for the first album, I did record some classical or acoustic guitar for a Mayan album. I'm not sure if it was the first or second one. But uh, other than that, I'm not on the album. I just helped them out. Okay. Shows. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. Just someone else we know from mine is Marcella Bavia. We happen to intervert interview her as well. So it's just yeah. so cool how it's all, all of you are so intertwined with each other's projects as well. Bro, yeah. And obviously, you just did the Alchemy project where you had a bunch of other amazing bands come together, and that's an incredible CD. We love it. Mm -hmm. Um. Something else I wanted to bring up, though, um, was there's two bands here, Hammerschlag and Aborted. Are those actual bands that you were a part of, too? Hammerschlag, that is a German band. I'm not sure if they are still around or whatever. Right. Um, this is a... a so w w we toured with Powerwolf at some point. Okay. And, uh, one of the guitar players, he's also a, a, a producer, or like he he has his own studio, and he mm -hmm. some bands come in and play or record their demo, or whatever. And one of these bands was Hammerschlag from Germany, <laughs> and then he reached out to me like, "Hey, are you open for a guest solo on this?" Nice, and I'm like, oh, cool. Just, uh, send them. and and it's pretty much because he asked me. I like him and. <laughs> And but that's yeah, so cool though so i kind of okay just opened up the laptop let's say recorded it sent it back awesome. um, and then and then i got like a whole bunch of emails from the, the people in the band like how am i gonna play this live and <laughs> <laughs> no way <laughs> you asked for it so you here it. you got it and, um... record a video to show them how you did it from <laughs> your <laughs> so and and actually i i I think I've never met the guys. I don't. I don't okay. think we played on a festival together. Uh, I just did this, you know, to help them out, I guess. And um, and then aborted is is a band, that, also a Belgian band. Okay, really awesome band, very brutal, um, and uh, but very good, very tight band. And I've known Sven, their singer, since forever, and, and the okay. rest. And uh, at some point, I co-managed the band uh, with, together with the Epica manager. We kind of did management for them. And I was supposed to to do an audition at some point, but that was pre-Epica. That's like a lifetime ago. <laughs> <laughs> at some point I thought of doing an audition for them and I already started practicing but then I think I thought it was too too brutal I, uh, I kind of felt like it was something inside me let's say a little voice said yeah don't do it don't do it okay 
So I, I uh, you listen to your conscious then. Yeah. yeah. I didn't understand. Like, I've had that a few times, to be honest. Like uh, another really? time, like, there was this famous band in Belgium, uh, Channel Zero. And, and the singer, so they split up. The singer starts a new band at some point, and, and I thought, I need to do audition. But then on the day of the audition, I had the same feeling, like, you shouldn't do it. Right. So I called in sick. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's um, called. <laughs> and I didn't do it. And, and, and shortly after, I think it was shortly after I joined uh, God Dethrone, and, you know, that's okay. what I different path and so uh, looking back it all always makes sense but uh mm -hmm. yeah well hey for us metallica was always the standard for metal when you guys got to open for them that was kind of like such a big moment for people over here because then i started talking to people about epica now that you open for metallica and it's actually opened up a lot of more Canadians to listening to Epica now that you open for Metallica. What was it like to, A, perform with them, get to know them, or did you always know them before? Or was that one of your first interactions with them? Yeah, I, I'd never met them before. Wow. And, and we did. And uh, yeah, it, it was, if you talk about the holy grail of support slots, that's the one, you know, there, yeah. there's nothing bigger than being support for metallica got that right because uh you know like uh just just to give you the numbers so you have an idea the first show we did was start the france which is the biggest uh it's the football stadium and yeah yeah it's eighty thousand capacity so they do two nights of that right and and i have to say the upper ring was closed so let's say it's still 60, 70,000 people. And yeah, they do wow. two nights. Um, if we play, let's say, Grass Pop, which is the biggest metal festival festival in Belgium, right? it's, it's a 50,000 capacity festival each day. So of course there's, there's like- Yeah, days. scattered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have like, with That's just insane. one show, they already have more people than the whole sold out festival day oh, of the man. Festival, right yeah. so just to put it in that perspective there's nothing bigger than than that slot right before metallica right so that wow. was a, a, a very cool experience a very nice guys also the crew i thought they were so down to earth helpful um yeah so very friendly i can't wow. say a bad thing about it it was a very nice experience also the the crowd of course uh it's not necessarily an epic crowd i would say right they were they were very supportive and, and uh, i didn't feel like we had to prove ourselves like it didn't, mm -hmm. i didn't it was like they also the all the Metallica fans welcomed us pretty much. So Absolutely. Um, that's incredible. Yeah, so that's that's a bucket list thing. Like, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> and and how did they reach out to you? Because I know Five Finger Death Punch was originally supposed to be there, or yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah so they were there. supposed to be on that tour or right. yeah, that position. And I think um Ivan, their singer, had some is it back injury or that was something health wise okay maybe a herniation or something some something like that so he uh he needed surgery and that recovery from the surgery took longer right that's the uh, official story so uh and that's why they couldn't do the tour and then i guess since the first one was in in the netherlands their first uh or no, the first one we did was Paris. So I guess they just looked at who's kind of uh, a big artist in France or Paris. Yeah. And then we were one of the bands uh, that were on the table. Oh, man. And I guess we just said yes quicker than the other bands, I guess. I guess. <laughs> and, and, uh, so the plan was just to do one. 
but then Five Finger wow. Death Punch couldn't make it to Germany as well, and couldn't make it to Scandinavia, and Sweden as well. So we did the whole run. Wow. Isn't that how life works? You want to be a drummer, you become a guitarist. You maybe don't know what you're going to do. All of a sudden you open for Metallica. Like you just got to be ready to jump on it when it comes, right? Yeah, because it's a funny thing. I was I was actually here when I got the, the phone call and I was working on uh, one of my songs. Oh. And so I'm I'm a, a dad as well. And, and uh, so when was this? I uh, can't even remember. Let's say a year ago. Or no, it was short notice, but can't even remember when these shows were, but uh, somewhere last year. Anyway, so I'm working on new stuff because I finally had some time to be in this room. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh. You have a, a young kid. Uh, there's yep. a lot of time. I, I think I, you can relate to that. <laughs> yes. um, so anyway, I'm like so happy that I can finally work on my new stuff again. And, um, and I get a call from my or I hear my phone go plain 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 whatever you know I'm like I'm busy now like don't <laughs> disturb me. and then I get a call from her manager I'm like ha ah. so I I I put it on silent I, I don't <laughs> know you know and then after three times I'm like okay this might be very uh, yeah urgent thing so I pick up he's like what are you doing this date so I just open up my agenda and uh, oh uh, let's see no kids uh, blah, 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 blah. okay i'm i can do a show and he already mentioned metallica but it didn't it didn't Think drop like, right no so um so it, it's like a half a minute phone call right so i go back to work and then five minutes in i'm like wait what did he say metallica so i open up that group app <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and I start reading. Oh shit, man! Metallica. Oh my gosh! So dude. that's my story of, uh, <laughs> of the Metallica offer. And the thing was, like, wow. he needed an urgent answer because he knew yeah. that fans uh, had the same question. I mean, it's Metallica, so they're not gonna ask just one band. They're gonna ask whoever is available. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, but we got we got the job, and uh, yeah. Well, hey, because like when we found out, we reached out to everyone on the Epica site to see how to contact you guys. And we got like three different people replying to us. One person said yes. One person said no. But then when we got Epica management saying yes, I don't know who it was, but they said it's going to be at 9 a.m. for you. And then we knew it was going to be like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. But we're like, we have to make this work. <laughs> Like, so I don't sorry. care how tired. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. Don't you, be sorry. We're so used to being in Canada, and most of our music love and our fans are actually from Europe. So I'm always eight hours ahead myself oh, okay. normally, anyways. Yeah. But it's it's worth it because you want to make sure you're there for the people you love, and this is also for the community because the Epicans have really meant so much to us. So they want to see you just as much as we want to see you as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? I still feel bad for not oh, letting don't. you go to that. <laughs> no, no, don't feel bad. We've been wanting this for a year, so don't feel bad at oh. all. So he doesn't good. sleep. He's fine. <laughs> <Don't sleep. laughs> um, so something I kind of wanted to ask about, you talk about Belgium so much. I want to know why Belgium is the best country in the world. Because that's where I live. <laughs> the best answer. Well, I I think uh, you know I I've lived in Holland to study. I've lived in Germany. Um, so I tested the water, and I I think it just has to do with where your roots are. I mean, of course, because some stuff that I love about Belgium, then the other guys in the band they look at me like, like come on, what? man, like uh, <laughs> like. But uh, yeah, I just, uh, to me, it's home. It feels like home. Yes. And uh, like I said before, I studied in Holland for a couple of years. When I moved back, felt like coming home. I lived in Germany for a couple of years. When I moved back, felt like home again. And uh, so I, I don't want to, yeah, it's a very small country. I guess in a way you okay. may 
able to relate to it because we have different languages. The north is Flemish. That's where I'm uh, from. South right. is uh, French speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it is it's a weird country, but 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 then again, that's the way it is. And uh, and I like the fact it's pretty small. You can get yeah and pretty fast. Yeah. And it's beautiful, beautiful uh, architecture and. Uh, well, not not everywhere, but <laughs> in general, if you go to Ghent or Bruges or even right. certain parts of Brussels, Antwerp is very historically beautiful, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and the beer, I guess, and, and the beer too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't drink beer anymore, but but I Belgian have you beer, stopped drinking now? Well, I didn't stop drinking, but right. uh, I just the beer. beer. Just the beer. It's just the wine now, right? Wine and among other things, but nice. <laughs> <laughs> mainly wine. But I don't drink that much uh, altogether anymore. Actually, I kind of feel like I got over that. I don't know. Right. Or I had my good portion of alcohol. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> I don't know. Your fair it. share. <laughs> yeah, so. I have a kind of um, random question. You you mentioned is it your wife? Yeah. Um, that she has the cats. Do you guys not like live together then, or is that just oh, no, cats? It's more like, I live at a farm. We have oh, horse okay. and a dog and cats and chicken and rooster. Oh my god. You live at and, a farm. Well, you know, we it's it's a it's a newly built house, but it looks like a farm. So we have stayed. Incredible. We have some land, and uh, um, but so I call it the farm. Yeah. But I'm a, I'm on tour a lot of times, so I never really I like animals, but not in a way like I want to keep them at home because if I'm on tour. They die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no kidding. If yes. You're on your own. But then, so that's why I never really had that in the past. But she's all about animals. And, yeah. uh, but then sometimes she works as well. And then I'm, <laughs> if I'm home, I'm stuck with shoveling shit. Oh my God, right? Sure that all, the, all the animals are not dying, you know? <laughs> and we have some land, so I have to uh, make sure that everything is uh, nice. And so that's more like why I tell, I, I didn't ask for four cats. One or two would have been fine. So, that's what I got, you know? Because <laughs> what do you got? You got, you have four cats. You have, I think, a dog, three horses yeah. as well. So that's awesome, though. And we love our yeah, animals. So we love last our tour, just to give you an example, last tour, I came home. And then uh, uh, a couple of days later, she's like, Oh, I'm gonna pick up the rooster. I'm like, which rooster? Oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you picked up a rooster. And uh, and then a couple of days ago, she she mentioned that she purpose uh, on purpose she didn't mention that because she she already knew that I would say oh, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. <laughs> and I also she, she was the one that wrote a a letter in the name of the latest cat that we got to ask me oh my to, God. to to join our family like she seems <laughs> awesome like <laughs> i found this, this, this little note in my pocket <laughs> like uh at, with the paw print oh, man. Yeah, well i really like oh will you be my cat daddy and <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, you two are adorable. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, actually, speaking about being a daddy. So your um, son, I believe it is, he's only about two. How has becoming a dad, he's three now. Oh, wait. Two and a half? <laughs> he's three. He's three. No, he's three. <laughs> That's amazing. How has becoming a dad changed how you attack music and going on tour? And how has that really changed your day-to-day -day life with everything? Well, the day-to-day -day life is completely different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like crazy. And sometimes it's like, what have I done? <laughs> but it's beautiful <laughs> as well. So it's a very uh, 
there's a lot of duality there but uh yeah you're right and it, it all depends on the the age and the stage they're in mm -hmm. because in the, in the beginning he was only like sleeping all day long and, of course and, mm -hmm. uh, so i could pretty much work and do a lot of stuff um and now it's a little different if he's home at least he needs all the attention he wants it play and you know of course you don't want to be the one saying no because i need to write a new song <laughs> but who cares so yeah. um so that's what i do but um yeah it, it was it still is sometimes frustrating especially i i don't know uh maybe some people cannot relate or something but if i'm in the zone i'm in the zone right mm -hmm. I, don't mess it's, yes it's my passion right so if i pick up a guitar and i start working on something i forget to eat i forget to do grocery shopping i forget the animals right it's that and then suddenly i see like oh shit it's like it's it's middle of the night already that's how it used mm -hmm. to be and right, for okay. me it's still difficult let's say to to adapt to that different schedule so it's more that i have to adapt and the rest of the world is fine let's say but i'm just a mm -hmm. weird guy if i go into the zone i just forget about everything else and uh, but i'm still learning that so i i would say it changed a lot and it's probably for the better because otherwise I'm just stuck in this room all day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and sometimes I stress about it, but I mean, looking at, looking back at the whole project now, because we're getting closer to recording actually. Exciting. So, yeah. Very exciting. Wow. So all the puzzle pieces are slowly falling into place, hopefully. And um, so it's going to be, I'm happy with what we have and I'm happy when I'm working now. Like I said, I'm working on the other uh, guys, their songs. and I'm happy hearing what they came up with and adding my stuff. And So it's not like we're going to sound way different now because I got a son. And, and it's not like that we don't going to meet the deadline. It's just like I have to focus a little more now so. i think i think what you mentioned same thing went through me i thought i was very patient until i had a, a kid and then now i'm realizing how even selfish i was with my own free time and just these little things you really took for granted that you didn't realize it was going to take that much even though you want to but then there's a bit of you like you said you want to get in your zone moments and get in that creative flow and it's really hard to balance. So it's also nice for us to hear how did the professionals balance their job with the kids and all that too, while ma maintaining it. So it's good that you have your priorities straight. Yeah. And that's also why we did these uh, writing camps because I'm not the only. Right. Exactly. Um, everyone has kind of the same thing, right? I mean, yeah, this is my home studio. So it means I'm home. That means that if the, if, if if there's a delivery, a package delivery, I'm the one opening the door. So I have to go downstairs and this and that, right. you know. So yeah. you're not really working all day because uh, if the dishwasher needs to be <laughs> empty, <laughs> you're the one doing it as well, right? Yeah. Uh, which is fine. But um, so it's still different from going to an office, let's say. Um, mm. and, uh, I don't know. But that's the way it is. And I also thought of maybe going, uh, I actually had a talk about that with our producer. He said like, well, if you like, you can, we can set up, let's say your little home studio here in the studio and you just drive up and down whenever you feel like it. But right. then, oh, it's also weird you know, to, that someone has to um, be at home or, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just, well, do whatever I can and hope for the best. <laughs> and then in the meantime, I have a, a great time here at home as well with my kid, you know, also with yeah. the whole COVID situation. I was here for the first one and a half years when he was born. And That's pretty incredible, man. Yeah, it's incredible. And it's something that not a lot of people can say. And I'm really fortunate and happy that it was at that time frame. And uh, um, yeah, so I've had a, I'm not complaining at all. 
<laughs> no, no. So I'm sometimes frustrated and like, oh shit, because I- I'm not sure if you have the same. If I'm working on a song, on a song, and you kind of get pulled out of it because you're you need to pick up your kid or you need to whatever the hell it is that you need to do it's still there if oh. i wake up if i go to bed it's like i'm working and then sometimes my, my girl would be like isaac are you on or <laughs> because i'm doing stuff but i'm like it's like a brain dead or something i'm just listening it's to... like a left tab left open on your computer in yeah. your brain right yeah like the song is going through my head all the time and uh, so this is also the time period when everything is slowly coming together yeah this is where i don't get a lot of sleep because i can't this is where i'm out of focus uh, on every field outside of the album <laughs> yeah yeah uh so it must be wow. horrible to have me around at this time <laughs> we're liking it <laughs> yeah i mean but, but uh yeah, at, yes. uh with the job i guess and uh she knows it and soon after the recordings i'll be normal again <laughs> i hope <laughs> well i i got a question on this um I recently I was checking out a lot of your previous interviews just to make sure I'm not asking all the same questions. But something you mentioned is when you go into another album, you like to try to reinvent yourself and to try to bring something new to the table. So I'm curious with this one, after doing the Alchemy Project, that's already pretty ambitious. How are you trying to stretch yourself and to try to reinvent there is a couple of things I should mention there. So first is if it comes to writing. Yeah. Um, uh, so in the past, I've had like my inner 16-year-old who had to approve whatever I was doing because back right. then, true evil metalhead, you know? Yes. Uh, uh, I also had a different album. Can't even remember which one. But uh, it was like, would Dimebag approve? Because I'm a huge Pantera fan. Pantera. Yep. And um, so so everything had to be, had to have the dime bag approved stamp on it. Right. And of course, it's a very, you know, you can't do that with every riff uh, no. if you're playing an Epica. But, um, but if it was a riff, it had to be approved. And, um, and this time around, I, I didn't really have a, this or that approved, but, but my take on this is, step back and try to come up with something that you would not do um, okay and of course there's still thrash metal riffs and all of that because i love it but we're happy <laughs> but i'm i'm always uh, but that goes for for guitars but also if i have a riff i program drums already at certain grooves <clears throat> and then as i said before i'm a bad drummer so i send it off to Aryan so he can make something that sounds like a like him yes uh, but i get the idea you know like the boom pop boom pa, and the doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, <laughs> so i do all of that but then just this time i i really spend way more time on on a different groove or a different take on the same idea and um okay. and if that uh, it's still the whole thing it's still gonna sound like epica because if you blend the six of us it, it is epica we've seen yes. that with the alchemy project because that was for us also kind of an eye-opener like even if you totally different things than you would usually do if we get together and we all do whatever it is we do it sounds like epica um and uh so but but so it's still going to sound like Epica, but it's going to be, for me, more interesting and hopefully for, let's say, the guitar player out there because they yes. might going to pick up on that. Oh, oh, this is a different way of doing things. Um, so, so that's as far as the composing goes. And then as far as the recording goes, that's something I'm really excited about. Oh, please tell. Um, this time around, we're going to record... Uh, with a three piece, so myself, Aryan, and Rob, 
So wow. drum, bass, and guitar. Yeah. I'm going to record live in the studio. And oh my god! Really? Because I was uh, so fed up with the the whole um, let's say polishing business. Like everything needs to be so precise and yes. on the grid and almost not as like organic taste of of yeah so i really miss that that live feel and every time i listen to you know i'm an old guy so i listen to the old stuff which was way better than all the new stuff you know <laughs> so, whenever you listen to that you're like man the, this vibe it has you know and um so I have been a very strong advocate for that to try it because wow. I know we can do it. I mean, we have the the quality within the band to do it. Yeah. Um, so why not? Why why if you have the quality, why would you uh, not go for it? Everything into pieces, and now we're gonna record this riff, and now this one, and and if it's not good enough, you're gonna repeat it a million times, and. Because in the past, I've been there, you know, sitting in the studio and then the, the engineer or producer stops the tape and, and it's like, you can play it better than that. And I'm like, it was good to me. Right. No, it's better. Okay, I'll do it again. No, it's still not good enough. Well, I thought it was good, you know. And then really? I play as long as I have to, that they are happy. Yeah. But I was happy with the first take and I don't think take 20 was any different from the first one you know so i totally get you oh so, uh, don't also don't get me wrong i like our producer and uh, we, yes. we but um and he also pushes us so that's good but but uh i i don't like everything to be perfect because that's um you know i work in the tech industry and a lot of people who come in who are audiophiles, they tend to really prefer analog because it has those intricacies that aren't perfect that you're able to pick up in audio. And I, I feel like that's kind of what I'm hearing with that live performance where that's the three piece. It gives that bit of intricacy yeah. that yeah, the audiophile. Because I mean, that's, I mean, we're a metal band. Yes. Industry, let's say and what is the best thing about a metal band or being in a metal band is the actual playing together you know yes. yeah yeah they can play live the together gifts, you know and uh, mm -hmm. and that's totally different because we would go into the studio and do pre-production all together we're all playing all together um do pre-production so we record that we have rehearsals like we'd say okay now we have all these demos but i think the transition between this riff and that riff still needs some work how are we gonna do it and then we mm. go through it we rehearse it we see what works and and we make a lot of decisions but you're actually playing together and that's and then after that everyone goes home and then the drummer comes in and then i come in and then the bass player and and it's like so weird because it sounds weird yeah but that's that's how everyone is used to it that way but i yeah. mm -hmm. and the weird thing is that's pretty much what got me thinking so mm -hmm. for the last album we had a full orchestra recording and mm -hmm. In the past, it, it sometimes was divided into different parts, like brass and then violins. It, it wasn't the full thing all at once. Right. But last time, it was the full thing all at once, which is very scary because it has to be great. Like, it yeah, has to work yes. the right way, right? And yeah. uh, there's no more tweaks you can do on recording, Dave. Um, but on the other hand, so it's it's goosebum beautiful right if you hear a full orchestra play stuff oh, yes it's like wow this sounds great but that also got me thinking like how is it that up until that point we have to be on the click we yeah. have to be perfect and if it's not perfect we have to do it again and again and again and again until it's perfect and then by the time you go to the orchestra, 
they play it just with a guy doing like this, <laughs> let's say. And and then that's perfect. Yeah. Right yeah. Away. And I didn't, I don't agree, you know. I'm not sure if every violin player is starting on the beat perfectly mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just the whole thing is perfect, not mm -hmm. all the small uh, little details. It's the whole thing that comes together and makes it perfect. Absolutely. And, uh, so, so that's where I... And actually, uh, the Alchemy Project was sort of a, a test for that. Because okay. we are, uh, not the whole EP, but we did a good bit of that uh, EP is recorded in this way. like drum. Really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just to see, like, okay, if we do that for an album, better be good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. If we can pull that off. And um, so, but that's really exciting. I, I can't wait to do that because... It, there's nothing more fun than just because we we get rid of all the stuff that is not metal like yes. no violence no <laughs> we're just there with the three of us and rocking out you know that and makes me think no you go sorry man well i don't mean it in a bad way like we get rid of the no <laughs> orchestration but you know what i mean right you get that raw metal energy and uh and i i absolutely look forward to that that makes me think of like the albums from the eighties and the seventies with like Led Zeppelin. And you can just hear that drum that they're hitting. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. something raw and organic about that feel makes you feel more a part of it. And it doesn't feel so robotic and so AI induced. And exactly. so that, that's so exciting for us on our end. And so I also, um, it's going to be a challenge for the I producer as well. You know, because yes. he is also so used like to his way of working and that's how we do it. But I think we're going to change the roles now. Like he used to tell me, you can do better. And right. I'll dare to tell him, don't fucking touch it. It's perfect the way it is. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, don't edit. Just nice. leave it. <laughs> right. And, oh, uh, that's so, so exciting. Yeah. I guess the, the end result is going to be somewhere meet in the middle. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a lear learning curve for everyone. But that's cool. You know, that's that's the initial question was, what's the challenge this time? Or what's your take? Well, wow. I, I think for everyone, that's going to be a back to the roots thing, which no kidding. I, I'm sure it's going to be a great experience. If you compare it to me sitting in the studio alone for a couple of weeks, or playing guitar all day long, and with no drummer, no bass player to be found, you know. <laughs> I think that is beautiful because so like our podcast where we do our interviews is called Story Time with ETC Enter the Chronic, and the thing that I love about what you're saying, getting everyone coming together and going to back to the back to the roots, that old school of jamming together to put your music that really brings the soul back into the music instead of the roboticness of replaying the same thing over and over again and like it's been a long time since I played instruments myself uh, but that soul of the music is really what gets everyone into into it and I think that's yeah. um, a, a perfect way to bring us back to that to the basics yeah because I agree. Yeah. For me, if I listen to albums, it's those little fragments of imperfection that are yeah. mm -hmm. that are the the best part of the whole album. Like if the Absolutely. solo kicks in, but it's a little too late or a little too this or that, I'm like, oh, that was awesome. You know. But I then if you, you put it on the beat, it'd be like, oh yeah, that's that's logical. Yeah. You wouldn't even it wouldn't be there, you know, because mm -hmm. it's a note on a beat with a snare and a kick or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but that's so, kind of yeah. why you remember even live performances is from some of those screw ups or even changing it as you go. Like you guys did um, consigned to oblivion at the AFAS. And then there's a moment where Simone and Kuhn like are laughing at each other because Kuhn like falls down on the keyboard. And like those are oh, moments yeah. that you definitely remember. So mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I'm really excited to hear this new album and to know how far you guys are already into it and how long you've actually been working on this since you started last year. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. wow. So 
this is incredible and we're getting pretty tired on our end here so sorry again no no <laughs> don't be sorry we, we, we have kind of gone through our our notes and all that too we didn't know how much time you actually had today yourself well the longer we talk the the, the more bad our new album's gonna be <laughs> oh no <laughs> Well, hey, maybe that's a good place to wrap it up. But also, Isaac, this has been so surreal for us. Um, we've never interviewed someone that's like literally on our wall. So <laughs> that's really cool. And we didn't want to try to fanboy too much. It's more just to tell you like how much you really do mean to us. Music's the one thing in my life that has saved me. So I, I liked Linkin Park, Opeth. Now it's you. That's literally my three bands that I have dived fully into. Yeah, and cool. I'm very excited for it. And thank you for giving us your time because it's definitely important for you right now. You're doing a lot of um, meaningful things right now. So thank you for giving us some time to be a part of this. Yeah, no, no problem. The pleasure is all mine. And I'm still uh, surprised that I see a Requiem for the Indifferent t-shirt, actually. I love this album. Because <laughs> there's not a lot of people who prefer that album over other albums but anyway uh, <laughs> you gotta show the love wherever it is we love all your albums and i'm sure many of the epicans will tell you that yeah probably yeah probably yeah. Eh? i'm proud <laughs> of all of them but, uh, and i'm yeah um thank you for having me uh it was, it was really nice i like the normal vibe of this interview having a conversation forward. yeah, yeah. I, I think it helped having that kind of beginning part because it was so <laughs> late and i was so nervous i almost needed that little bit to kind of calm oh, okay. me down so this is we, great we hit record this time we've not hit record before yes that was embarrassing yeah. oh you, you we, we didn't that. record with marcella but then oh. luckily she came back and gave us another interview and then we've been great since then and the sure. mic always has worked, so I'm surprised it didn't work this time. But yeah, that was my mistake because when you said check the the volumes on the on the headphone, right? First, I didn't hear anything, but then later on, I it was just the volume was down on my interface. <laughs> I, but the thing is, the sound is coming out of my computer now, so right. that's was very confused. But anyway, I uh, have one more I'm question. A professional actually. musician. <laughs> What one question I have for you because you're being just so honest. Um, what is your favorite solo that you have made for Epica? Ooh. Um it's hard. I would say there's a couple, but if I had to pick one, I think uh, Beyond the Matrix. Wow, okay, yeah. I love the, the, I don't think it's necessarily the solo, but it's the, I wanted uh, to have a complete switch in the feel at that point. So uh, you already have this happy song Then I thought, okay, yeah. I write this kind of stuff and need some metal stuff in the middle. So that's what I did. And then I thought now it needs to go something completely different with the yeah. solo. And then come back into that happy thing. And then it's going to be a cool song. And, it sure uh, is. And, and yeah, and, and I think that worked pretty okay. -ish. So the solo takes you out of the whole feel. It has yes. a different uh, time signature as well. and uh, Or a different tempo, I should say. But it blends pretty well. And, and I think that was, that's a cool uh, like it's not only the solo that could grab your attention it's also the vibe that changes that grabs Absolutely. your attention. so that way. or kingdom of heaven one that's a that was, that, that's <laughs> mine that that literally broke us to tears just how incredible it is especially after the bardar or thordar oh, about going God. through all that rebirth and all that and it, it was just such an impactful song when it happened for us. Yeah, you see, it's not only the solo. That, yeah, exactly. Like, you have the story, and that's all, always what I try to do with a solo. Mm -hmm. Not just play a solo because of the solo. Because no. 
it means well, something use hard. your music to tell a story to be able to get the emotion across because music is a universal language that everyone can understand yeah exactly mm -hmm. but also that that the song should lead to the solo like yes that. and it sometimes does. If it doesn't lead to a solo then you shouldn't play one that's that's more what i mean like yes, yes. Is, that you're like oh yeah now it's, now it's there <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, thank you so much. I know you're going to go right back to playing, I think. We're going to go. That's right. Can't wait. <laughs> no. Baby is still. Actually, baby is just getting up. So we got to give a bottle oh, into the baby. Oh, so shit. again, yeah. Isaac, thank you so much for this. Um, This was our 11th episode for Storytime with ETC. So oh. thank you for being a part of this. And we hope to see you again because at the end of the year, we will see you in the Netherlands. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you might not know this, but we already have an interview planned with you at the end of the year as well. Oh, okay, cool. Well, so I'll we'll see you, see you again. <laughs> yeah, good luck with the channel and thanks for having me. And now I go back to work, back to metal. Oh, man. <laughs> Get in your zone. We're happy when you are in there. I will. Okay, cool. Okay. Take hey. care, Isaac. Take care. Sleep tight. Oh, Take care. <laughs> bye bye. But Hi. even being this late, we are so energized after talking to Isaac. It is 4.14 a.m. And I mean, just having that moment with your idol, Epikins, is nothing like it. I hope you had a great time with us with this conversation because it was so organic and just went so Absolutely. many different ways. And how it all started, too, We our mic wasn't coming through. So literally, we had to non-verbally communicate with Isaac right off the bat just to kind of figure out how this was going to mm -hmm. work, if we were going to do it another day. If but, we had to reset the link, like what yeah. was happening. So I think that was so cool to have that moment of that non-verbal communication to really like break down any walls or anything yeah. that could be there. Broke either my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> mine as well. But going in there as going into an interview with someone and not knowing what kind of questions are going to be asked and, you know, being the fanboy, fangirl going in to interview one of your idols. Yes. And so having that moment really humanized, I think, this whole conversation and interaction going forward. The thing that I thought was really cool talking with Isaac about as well was kind of that whole conversation with being in the moment with music, jamming together, those types of things. And I know that's something I have to work on even in our reactions is yes. not hitting stop and stop and stop because Try. I'm worried about what I'm saying or if I'm, you know, being too robotic and then making myself into a robot in those moments. You can become way too self-aware that mm -hmm. way. And I think Isaac is such an honest charismatic and joking type of person where he knows how to break his own self-awareness in the correct way yeah and he's so open to tell you that he actually has favorites and all that which i know a lot of people are so scared to put a stamp down on what they love but like even at the very end of the the interview he's like man you got a record for the indifferent shirt on like respect yeah you know kind of what that means but like i love this album itself Absolutely. and everyone has a favorite album for epica and it was just yeah that's probably our favorite <laughs> but anyways <laughs> it was just so cool y'all because he is a real person he's family first his priorities are correct mm -hmm. and his ambition with the college of metal i think was one of the most inspiring yes. things as future guitarists can now potentially already with Isaac go and learn these incredible songs maybe beyond the matrix solo in Absolutely. there literally from him and potentially getting all these amazing other guitarists as well like the minds that these people have over in Europe right now mm -hmm. what they're trying to expand they're across the world that's why we want to be a part of it absolutely and I think like also with the um school of metal i believe college of metal college of metal yeah sorry i was thinking school of rock but that is yeah. a movie and yeah. with college of metal is um i think that's so cool to also give a place where um people who love to teach as well guitarists who want to be able to teach and show these different intricacies that they do because yeah. teaching is such an intimate thing that also brings so much joy to people where they will be able to do that when they don't necessarily have the time to help with that influence it's a perfect avenue because they perfect can't meet avenue. in person now you can send these things like mm -hmm. i know 
um, some of these colleges online, these people have to go to the actual studio to get this um, lesson out. But to be able to have like James just send a file and then you can see all this stuff. Oh my God, it's incredible. When I say James, that's James Hetfield because I think he's trying to reach out for those people like he was saying. That's how ambitious really Isaac is in the whole band of Epica and even getting to hear how far they are with the new album already. I don't know. It was so... I didn't know what to really ask if you even could with stuff going on with like legal stuff and all that. But Isaac was so generous with mm-hmm. every question we had. So I hope this was an amazing surprise for y'all because we really didn't tell anyone this was going on. And it was really kind of quick. They were just like, hey, we can do it this weekend. We're like, okay, no sleep. We're doing it. We got this. We got to do it for y'all. Y'all do it for us. And this was as much for us as it was for you. Um, We we committed to Epica because you guys told us to commit to it because you knew we would love it. And we we sure do. (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm so excited that we got to speak with Isaac because this is actually one of my favorite uh, band members and one of my favorite guitarists. Yeah, you've always loved I've him soon as al- you saw him. I've always loved the energy. I've always loved like just the enthusiasm that he has on stage and now yes. seeing it in person, being able to, to talk with him. Um, it, it really shows how much of a genuine soul Isaac is and how much you can hear that play through his music. Absolutely. And as he's Mm -hmm. trying to reinvent himself even more and kind of change it up, that just makes us even more anticipated for what's actually coming. And they're probably going to be doing this live for the actual album, too. Even (gasps) better. So hopefully... Such an amazing tidbit. Such a good tidbit. Like, (laughs) wow. We we feel so honored and blessed. So hopefully you guys all did as well, Epicans. If you had a good time, please hit that like button. Share this around so everyone can know what amazing music is coming from epica very soon and if you are going to that show in amsterdam or mexico please let us know all right y'all this was story time with etc episode number 12 with isaac delahaye thank you so much for being here everyone peace and love god bless y'all take care and bye for now don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more enter the chronicness Thank you so much for making it all the way to the very end of the video. And if you have not yet done this, here's an easy way to subscribe to our channel. And if you want to subscribe to the artists that you just heard, here's an easy way to do that as well. And if you are also interested in finding a video that you might like, just click here. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. Peace and love, everyone. God bless y'all. Take care. Bye for now.